Father. Yes, Lord. There's no one like you. Yes, Lord. You are awesome. You are good. Yes, you are kind. Yes, oh, precious Father. Thank you for loving us so much. Yes, thank you for all you are to us. Even when we go out of your way, yes, when we don't obey you, when we walk our way, Father, yet... In our trouble and in our trials, we'll call on to you and you still come in your mercy. To deliver us out of the trouble we've made ourselves. Father, thank you for being who you are. Thank you for being such a loving father. Nobody can love us the way you do. Thank you, Father God. Thank you for who you are. And thank you for making us your own. Even when we were in sin, you made us your own. You made us belong to you. Father, thank you. Glory be to your name forevermore, Father God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. I think today will mark the end of our restoration series. So please, if you have not been here at the beginning, please go to our YouTube channel. And uh, please, please, please listen to the four of them. Your faith will be ignited. And you reclaim everything the enemy has stolen from you. Praise the Lord. Amen. So today we are just going to talk about how to reclaim what the devil has stolen from you. Praise the Lord. How, what the, how to reclaim what the devil has stolen. All this while we'll be talking about all this restoration. Why is God's plan? I believe last Sunday we spent time to explain why is God's plan for us to take back what the enemy has taken from us. And we also mentioned that what the enemy does for us and what the children of God do without knowing is that they get mad. They even get mad at God without even some. They may not verbalize it, but it's like, God, I prayed and fasted for this business. And yet it went the way it went. Is it that my prayer is not working? Or is it, you know, it's more like God. What happened here? You know, in an anger, we are directing the anger to the wrong person. Praise the Lord. And as long as we're in that mode, and many people will say, I've had it self. I will not do business again. I've had it self. I will not do this again. Do you not allow the enemy to get. To go free with what he has stolen. And that's not the way. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We'll do things gospel so that we'll reclaim. Because the Bible we know in John 10 10. The thief comes not. But to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So the fact that something good, or even if God was in it, you know, brethren think that when there's opposition or when things didn't go well, maybe it wasn't God's plan at the beginning. Who told you that? Praise the Lord. Who told you that? The fact that something, I know that sometimes circumstances will we will face a lot of uh, difficulty when we are in the wrong way and God is trying to that redirect us through circumstances. But most times, the fact that you want to check what God has done, you don't check it through opposition, by lack of opposition. Because if it is God, you will be opposed. Satan will not fall down there, play dead, and allow you to succeed. Praise the Lord. If, well, have we not been opposed in this church? If you don't, if you are not the prophet to tell you that God is here. So anything that God is involved, Satan will also try to oppose. So when the enemy tries to oppose or makes you take a wrong step, or however it came, we mention it that it can even come out of your own mistake. What you lost or whatever is the situation. God's plan is God's plan. God's plan is that you get it back. Amen. I, I think I spent time on Sunday, last Sunday, to mention these things. God's plan is that you do what? You get it back. It's not God's plan for you to allow it to, to allow the enemy. And if all of us are doing this, a time will come when the enemy will be mindful of doing things from you or stealing from you. Because you were, and again, we mentioned it last week, you wind up better than how you were in the beginning. We mentioned just an example, you wind up better. God will always do better at the end than how you were at the beginning. So if Satan knows that anytime I mess up with them, they get up getting more blessed, what will he do? He's a smart guy. He will stop bothering you so much. Praise the Lord. So please, anything, and it doesn't matter how many, um, it doesn't matter how many uh, years it happened when you were young, or it doesn't even matter the generation. Even if it's a family thing, or maybe the last generation of your family. The Bible says, I think I read it on, on, on Friday, Isaiah 61. He is the repairer of the bridge. He said you will be the one to restore the devastations of many generations. Amen. So it's not just about you. Do we understand? So God can use you to restore the devastation of many generations. So we are not talking about just us. Maybe your life has been peaceful so far. You have not bothered with anything. So Satan has not bothered with you. Go back to your family line. Praise the Lord. Whatever has been stolen, you can get back. Amen. You can get back. 
And that's the faith that we need. How does faith come? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And I want to challenge you here because I'll give you some scriptures that you use for to meditate on this. Please don't put it away. Some of us is every Sunday you hear a new one, you just leave it after Sunday. Again, again, again. That we do not progress in Christianity that way. All the scriptures that I shared is for you to use it and pray and meditate. And then it becomes a reality in your life. It's not just, you will hear that I'm telling the truth. Hey, yeah, 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 great, great, great. If you don't do anything, it stops there. Praise the Lord. He said the measure of study you give to what you're hearing is the measure of virtue that will come back to you. I'm quoting scripture now. So if you don't bother, no virtue, no measure of study, nothing. That's what will come back to you, nothing. But it will not be your portion anymore in Jesus' name. So we are saying how do you get back, reclaim what the enemy has stolen. Number one, encourage yourself in the Lord. Encourage yourself in the Lord. And we shared this, I don't know if we shared the last week, but 1 Samuel 36. 1 Samuel 36. It's the story of David and Ziklag. I think we mentioned it a lot here. So, so, and David was greatly distressed. And then he gives, uh, was, was now in great danger because his men were very bitter about losing their sons and daughters. And they began to talk of stoning him. But David found strength in the Lord. So encouraging yourself in the Lord is the same as finding strength in God. Praise the Lord. But remember, before David decided, and that's why God is emphasizing what he's emphasizing with us. David was at a crossroad. Praise the Lord. He was at a crossroad. But which way do I go? And all of us will face that crossroad once in a while. It will happen. Which way do I go? Do I go the way of this? Mourning and crying like every other person. Because it's natural to cry. If you lose your daughter. If you lose your son. If you lose money. It's so natural to cry. So, you can either decide to go that way. Or you go in the way that David went. But the way that David went brought back everything the enemy has stolen from us more. If you go the other way of, yes, it's natural to mourn and weep and just say, now, from now on, I know to again. You know, that's some of our attitude. I know to again, you know, like I was beaten. And you don't know that the reason why Satan even makes sure you experience what you experience is so that you don't do again. It's to discourage you, especially if that part is the part God is planning for you. It's to discourage you very, very well. And you say, oh, so you agree with the emotion, you agree with the emotion, you get angry, angry at the wrong person, that I fasted, I prayed, or somebody encouraged me, I thought I was hearing God, and all that. Or you stay in the emotion of it, every time you sleep, you're thinking about the money you've lost, or whatever that has happened. If you go that way, you will not get it back. Praise the Lord. The only way of doing what God, it, we, must do, we must do things God's way to get God's result. That's the bottom line. We must do things God's way to get God's result. Not the world's way. Not the world's way. Praise the Lord. So, we've been at crossroads and then, which direction you go will determine the outcome of that situation. Praise the Lord. So, but do you know one thing I like God for? In the walk, we walk. In the way, there's nothing like it's over. The day you wake up is your morning. Do you see that's the beautiful thing about being children of God? The day you wake up is your morning. Okay, as you're hearing this now, so I didn't know. Oh, Satan, so I didn't know that if I lose things like this, I thought that so I can use my faith to get back. That's it. That's the excitement of Christianity. There's nothing like oh, it happens so long. No, 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 no. Remember again, I think it's last week. Our job is to believe. The power of doing how God will do it is not our business. Do we understand? How God will do what he has promised is not our business. You cannot say, hey, I'm already 50, so it's not going to happen. You don't know how God will bring the children you're supposed to have to you. Don't just rule out. You don't, you don't use your physical senses and what happens in the natural world to limit God. Praise the Lord. You remember that is part of the problem of the children of Israel. Can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Can God do this? Yeah, I know. I know he, he, he divided the Red Sea. We know he did this. But in this wilderness, where nothing is growing, where everything is arid, can God furnish a table here? Are you asking that kind of question? You will not get restoration by asking such questions. Because the Bible says, 
they, they, they did not please God because of their, of their own belief. They limited the Holy One of Israel. You will not limit God anymore in your life in Jesus' name. They limited the Holy One of Israel. Praise the Lord. So, so now, David recovered all that. So, how do you encourage yourself? Two ways. With the Word of God. Praise the Lord. There is no time you will spend enough time in the Word of God that you will not live encouraged. You will spend time, okay? I'm waiting on God, you know, like, yeah, I need to, you will spend, you will spend quality time with the word. You must live encouraged. Amen. Even if you don't know where to go, go to the Psalms. You will finish and you will get what? You will become encouraged. David in their time, the only way they connect with the word of God is through uh, Urim and Turim. And that's what David did. He called that theater the priest and said, throw the dice. That's how they do to know the mind of God. Now, you don't have the mind of God in the pages of a book, the Bible. So it's not like you're not calling any Abiata anymore. It's already there in your Bible. All you need to do is to open it. Ask the Holy Spirit to show you. And you read. Sometimes we are so confused that you don't even know what to read. Pray. Ask the Holy Spirit, which way do I go? Where do I read now? And you go. And you open the scripture. Before you know it, God will use what is there to encourage you. Praise the Lord. So, now, another way is... Uh, Remind yourself of the victories that God has given you in the past. If this thing helps us so much. Sometimes it takes a while to, for the memories to start coming. As you know what we're discussing this morning. That anger can be, you know, like, uh, can be bitterness, can be for what has happened. So it may not be directed towards anybody. It could be the anger about the way uh, fosters, uh, you know, deceived you. It can be, you know, we get angry. It, could, it may not just necessarily be against somebody. It could be about a situation. Do you understand? It could be about anything. So you're angry. So what do you do at that moment? You know, because you need to bring yourself to a place where you can hear God. If David didn't encourage himself with the emotional tension at that moment when they are all crying, weeping, if David didn't calm down to encourage himself, he wouldn't have heard God. Praise the Lord. The same thing with us. So one of the things you do, remind yourself of the victories of the past. And I believe God, there is nobody here that God has not been good to. There is nobody here that you have never seen the hand of God in your life. There is nobody. So remind yourself of those victories. And say, God did it for me like this. He will do it again. The same God. He has not changed. Now, I mentioned last week that even if for any reason you don't have any testimony of your life at all, go to the Bible. The stories in the Bible are testimonies of other people. Is that not saying? David had testimony. The children of Israel had testimony. How God divided the Red Sea for them. The Bible says, Hebrews 10, uh, 13, 8. The same God. The same God. God is the same yesterday, today, and for Jesus is the same. I hope Jesus is God. Jesus is the same yesterday. So that same God that did it, I, I hope I got it. Yes. That same God that did it in the past, he has not changed. Do we see it? See? And Malachi, when we were doing Malachi, is it Malachi 1? We say, I am, the, I am God. I am Jehovah. I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. So they don't change. So what he did in the past, he will still do now. Do we understand? What he has done before, he can do again and again because it doesn't change. And one thing with God is that what he does for one, he can do for another. If there's a precedent in the Bible, ah, yeah, that's your, that's your um, how do I put it? Father, you did it before. I'm not asking you to do what you have never done before. Once there is a precedent in the Bible, go to that. And stay on it. And God will perform the miracle in Jesus' name. Amen. So encouraging yourself in the Lord. Number two is... Sorry. Number two is uh, pursue. I mentioned this on Friday. We did it for our prayer. Pursue. So, and he answered it. Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them. And without fail, recover or recover all. So, for David, pursue means to gather his men. Gather information about the enemies. Remember that one of the things that David was doing to know how they've gone, those uh, Amalaka, uh, Zik, uh, Zik, uh, they are Amalakas, where they've gone, which way they've gone, and the one Ethiopian that they picked on the way helped them to give them the information. Praise the Lord. So, and then David's pursuit was gather information and then attack them until they were defeated. So, what does pursuing look like in your situation? Praise the Lord. What does pursuing look like in your situation? If the devil has stolen your health, your sleep, and your peace, how can you begin to pursue? You begin by making a decision that you're not going to camp out where you are and settle for the steps. I'm changing. I won't allow this. That's part of the pursuit. Praise the Lord. If you remember, if you go through the Bible, 
People don't realize that when you are standing on the word of God, it is an offensive position because it's a hard thing to stand. Hebrews, uh, Ephesians 6, verse 10, he says, having done all, he says, stand therefore, having done all to stand, stand therefore. To stand in faith, as we are talking about this now, for example, do you understand? What are we saying? You believe God, you begin to meditate on the scriptures, and you stand on it. That standing is one of the hardest things to do. It's not easy to stand. Praise the Lord. Because as you're standing, the enemy will be trying to push you from the pillar to post. He might even do something to tell you that he, you are, you're believing for restoration and I'm doing more. Don't buy his lies. Do we understand? For example, you could be believing God for restoration of health. And instead of the, whatever it is that the enemy has stolen, getting better, now you begin to experience it in a worse situation. Don't be fooled by all these things. Praise the Lord. What is fear? False appearances appearing real. Fear, false appearances. That is the acronym for fear. False, false um, appearance. No, false. What's it? False evidence appearing real. F E A R. Yes, false evidence appearing real. That's fear. That thing is not the truth. But the enemy will make it look as if it's the truth. Praise the Lord. So, um, you say, I have not ought to stand. If you go to the next stand, it's again stand. Stand, therefore. Stand therefore. So that could be part of the pursuit. You've heard the word of God, you believe God, and you stay there. Praise the Lord. So, now, your weapons, and then the weapons of God that God has given us are number one the word of God, the words of your mouth. You will not use your mouth to cancel what you're believing for. The words of your mouth, and the knowledge of your authority over all the powers of darkness. Praise the Lord. So, all this, as you're doing it, power will rise up. Even the scriptures, if you're confessing it and meditating on it, after a while, something will ha happen inside of you. It's no longer a struggle. You just know and know. I don't know how God will be, but it's coming back. Amen. It's coming back. And it's not just coming back, it's coming back double. Coming back sevenfold. Whatever your faith can take. But the minimum we are, I, I expected is double. Is that not so, the Bible says? The minimum is double. Praise the Lord. So, now, the next one is... Um, Overtake. Overtake. Go to Revelation 12, 11. Overtake. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. That overcame could be same as they overtook him. Because when you catch somebody, you overcome them. That is it's, it's tantamount to recovering everything. Praise the Lord. Then in a... Um, in, in verse 8 of that, uh, 1 Samuel 30, he says, You shall surely overtake them and without fail recover all. Did he say recover some? See God, see God. Did he say you recover some? You recover all. Brethren, I want your faith to rise for this. Praise the Lord. You will without fail recover all. But as you move into the process of overtaking the enemy, Sometimes it will not be instant, brethren. It will not be instant. And that's where it's going to take perseverance. Do you remember what I just said some few minutes ago? It may not be instant. You need to persevere. Praise the Lord. You need to persevere. Now, 1 Samuel 30, 17. Yeah, 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel 30, uh, yes. And uh, David and his men rushed in among them and slaughtered them throughout that night and the entire next day until evening. Look at how long this battle take. One night to another night. They were fighting consistently. Const it's not like they went for a break. Oh. That is constantly 24 hours fight. You think it was easy? Sometimes ours may not be physical fighting. It could be standing upon what God has promised in his word. Praise the Lord. The man of God was sharing about some things he stood for for 20 years. He came to pass. Do we understand? So what I'm trying to say is that persevering is needed. You need to persevere. It could be one day. It could be six months. It could be whatever. But one thing I know is that as you're believing God for, possibly it's business. What may God do? He'll give you business idea. And this time around, bam, 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 everything. When you see people 
and they say, oh, they, they see, see, they instant, there's nothing like instant success. Praise the Lord. Do we understand? There's nothing like, you didn't know the story. You didn't know what went underground. But when, what you're seeing is their manifestation. They didn't tell you the whole story. Praise the Lord. But as you're standing in faith, God will not direct and redirect and redirect and redirect and redirect. Then I'm sure... Uh, Job would have said, God, how, where are you going to start from? But did God do what he did or not? Did what he said he did. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, now, so you overtake. You overtake. We need patience, faith, patience, and God's work. Keep believing and speaking, and you take back everything. Praise the Lord. It will take time, but let not time. Let not time disturb you. Let not time destabilize you. Let not time, because the enemy's warfare is always time bound. Faith is now. Faith is not bound by time. Faith is now. I believe it's already done. It's nothing to do with time. Praise the Lord. Tomorrow I wake up and you say, why well, come? It doesn't happen. No, but I believe it's done. Tomorrow, of, tomorrow becomes today again. I wake up next tomorrow. What happens again? So today. It becomes today. What is happening today? Today, I believe. Simple. Keep believing. Don't let time determine. Don't let it determine what God is doing. Because God is above time. He knows how to. And one of the things we learned here, God can restore time. Amen. I'll restore the years. Is that not what he told us? Joel 2.25. I'll restore the years. The canker worm, the palmer worm, the caterpillars have eaten. My great army which has sent among you. And my people shall eat and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord their God that has done wondrously for them. And my people shall never be ashamed. Amen. Amen. That's God. Praise the Lord. Amen. My people shall never be ashamed. So, now, again, when you go to overtake and reclaim what the devil has stolen, don't just go for what you have lost. Why? Expect more. That's why we're sharing what we're sharing. He said, for your shame, you will have what? Double. So don't just go to get exactly what you lost. Expect more. Because that's the justice system of God. There will be reparation. God will recompense you for what you have passed through. I think we already last week that God will recompense his people for their suffering. Everything the enemy has put you through, God will give you. Praise the Lord. He will give you double. Praise God. So this is how to how to recover everything the enemy has stolen. Now I want to give us, leave us with some scriptures that we will use. Some scriptures we will use for this. We've done some of them before, but you can't. Just seven. Praise the Lord. And you can write it. I think I still have a little. You can just quickly do a, a, like a, a shorthand uh, this thing. Number one, Exodus, based on Exodus 3 21. The favor of God in my life restores everything. I declare, that's how you will start it. I declare in the name of Jesus. Number one, the favor of God, according to uh, Exodus 3 21. The favor of God restores everything the enemy has stolen from me. Simple, isn't it? I declare in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, that, that I declare in the name of Jesus that the favor of God in my life, because you have the favor of God, based on Exodus 3, 21, restores everything the enemy has stolen from me. And it's how God restored the children of Israel. Praise the Lord. Number two, Joshua eleven twenty. I'm expecting great victories in the face of great impossibilities. Remember, in the name of Jesus is what is, um, that's the start of the, um, this. I'm expecting great victories in the face of great impossibilities. Joshua uh, 11 20. Can you put it? Yes. For it was of the Lord to harden their hearts, that they should come against Israel in battle, that he might destroy them utterly, and that they might have no favor, but that he might destroy them as the Lord commanded. Every one of them, Joshua, God used Joshua to destroy them. Praise the Lord. Amen. Number three, I have found it in, based on, um, um, I declare in the name of Jesus, I have found the thief, and he must restore to me seven times what he stole. Proverbs 6.31, I have found the thief, and he must restore to me seven times what he stole from me. Number four, I am pursuing total restoration of my money. Time 
opportunities, health, and relationships, and I will, without fail, recover all. Based on 1 Samuel 30, 6 to 8, I will read it again. I, I remember that every one of them is starting, I declare in the name of Jesus. So I am pursuing total, not number four, I am pursuing total restoration of my money, time, opportunities, health, and relationships. That's why they got everything, even their daughters. Relationships, and I will without fail recover all. Praise the Lord. Amen. Number five, number five. I am the head and not the tail. That is in Deuteronomy 28, 13, by the way. That's the scripture reference. I am the head and not the tail. Above and not beneath. I express, I expect blessings to chase me down and overtake me. Remember that word, overtake. Remember that word, overtake. God used it again in the blessing scripture. I will, I expect blessings. What are you expecting? I expect blessings to chase me down and overtake me. Every tongue that rises against me will be shown to be in the wrong. No weapon formed against me, my finances, my health, my family, or my ministry will ever prosper. Praise the Lord. So number six. That's Deuteronomy 28, 13. Number six. God is turning my situation around right now. Believe it as you're speaking it. God is turning my situation around right now. As I obey him, I'm praising with a grateful heart. My faith and trust in him is opening the door for a total and complete restoration of everything that has been stolen. Romans 8.28. I'll read it again. Romans 8.28. God is turning my situation around right now. As I obey and praise him with a grateful heart, my faith and trust in him is opening the door for a total and complete restoration of everything that has been stolen from me. Praise the Lord. Amen. Finally, number seven, I am more than a conqueror. I am not only recovering everything that has been stolen from me, but I am going to a new level beyond that in Jesus' name. Romans 8, 37. Write the scripture. I am more than a conqueror. I'm not only recovering everything that has been stolen from me, but I am going to a new level beyond that in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. As you speak these declarations over your life, please try this. The word of God doesn't fail. Just do it one month and see faith will not come. And then whether you see changes in your life or not. Praise the Lord. The word of God is the key. The key to our victory. Praise the Lord. So shall we stand up?